बहाल हालिश उमर चतोरे आहलन मसान मरहबा भूना मूचो ग्रासिया स्वामी अम भल्ली करे आया होश गाल दिन नायो साया खुया मोरा ची वतो ची हाल योद काली मेरा खैर उतान एंड अ वेरी वॉर्म वेलकम टू एवरीबॉडी यू स्टीवन इनटू पीटी वर्ल्ड एंड वाचिंग वर्ल्ड दिस मॉर्निंग आउट सेम वेरी वेल एंड कुली हुआ पर सी मिस हाजर सत्य आई हैव टू बी शहजाद सान खान एंड वी होप एंड प्रे दैट एवरीबॉडी आउट देयर इज डूइंग वंडरफुली वेल दैट यू रेडी टू किक स्टार्ट योर डे विद अस बट फर्स्ट थिंग्स फर्स्ट यू नो द वेदर इज फैंटास्टिक ओवर हियर फाइनली अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह लेट्स बीन you know answering all my prayers shukr alhamdulillah that's what we pray for everybody else out there as well but yeah today the second most important thing ladies and gentlemen hello ajra assalam alaikum how are you feeling today wa alaikum assalam thank you so much for introducing me and i think i can vouch for shahzad because he was very impatiently waiting for the monsoon season for the monsoon rainfall and i think uh, today we are having a very constant uh, rainfall and uh, it's the, i i would guess it's the first rainfall i don't know i mean met office there's uh, more um, in a best category to tell us that uh but um yes according to my producer this is the pre monsoon and we are going to witness the monsoon season as of now i don't know if it's uh july why do we are not having the monsoon as of now uh, but having said so there's been much that has been written on the monsoon yeah. uh, and, and and you know so you know they we will obviously come back to that dialogue as well but imagine that the med department says mm -hmm. that the fourth spell of monsoon reasons has, has uh, rains has started mm -hmm. across country which will continue till thursday According to Met Office, monsoon currents from Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal are penetrating upper central parts of the country and likely to strengthen from today. A uh, trough of westerly wave is also present over upper parts of the country. The PMD has advised all the concerned authorities to remain vigilant and take necessary measures to avoid any untoward situation. Please do so. Landslides may disrupt roads at the vulnerable hilly areas of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Murri, Galiyat, Kashmir, and Gilgit Baltistan during the wet period. So please make sure. that you do not sit in your car and leave for muri in all of these places mm -hmm. when uh, while it's raining the farmers are advised to manage their activities keeping in view the weather forecast travelers and tourists are once again advised to remain extra cautious and manage their traveling according to weather conditions and avoid any untoward situation during the wet spell and i think one of the i would say disadvantage i i think there is all uh, the advantage i'm all in for having the rain here at islam but but one thing that stands out is that you know you have to take a very long commute because you know the streets are very clogged and the roads are very clogged mm. and but the good thing is it's a well planned city so they do have um, all of those uh, what do you call it the sewerage system, sewerage system yep. where uh, they are able to regulate that accumulation of the water uh, but shahzad uh, there has been a lot written on a very philosophical topic of the pain yep. and we have seen that uh, how spiritually if we see through our religious scriptures if we see through our religious literature um, allah has always tested his prophet it's his closer uh, people through the pain through all the tests and trials and why because pain pain brings uh, you more lot more proximate to allah subhanahu wa taala and um, i think some of the beautiful things beautiful discoveries some of the beautiful manifestations literature thoughts have came after a person has been through immense pain True. and after that he is able to transmute that pain into something very beautiful so these are the implications spiritual implications of the pain but we are uh, going to explore the pain through the lens of the medicine what exactly is the definition of pain if you are feeling pain what is the threshold that you need to have it because some of time i do feel that uh, some people they are very sensitive to the pain yeah. and they are not able to tolerate that yeah. or uh, should we be tolerating pain in the first place right and i, I think and in addition to this you know hajra because you know you might have suffered from pain you know you know that's how life is everybody Back goes pain. and you know there are phases in life where there is pain then you know allah takes away the pain as well but in addition to this i think what we really need to kind of talk about is you know so for everybody for example god forbid going through or suffering from arthritis you know let's right. talk about yeah. that people might have back aches as well you know yeah. there are people with you know a uh, frozen shoulder you know there's so many different types you know so imagine that you you cannot get a surgery done one it's very expensive two you know you don't know whether it's going to work out for you or not three probably you're not of that age where you know surgery is recommended you're already in pain what can you do i think there there are very lesser recommendations from doctors as well you know either you go to a doctor you walk into his clinic if he's a surgeon he'll be like sir aapka to operation hoga kal aa jaye you know you go to somebody who's going to give you medicine if it's not working 
How will you make your life better? So this is something, ladies and gentlemen, that we will be talking about as well. Imagine that, you know, we have been uh, very vocal about sports medicine. We do see a dearth over here for doctors who have actually got their hands on practice in sports medicine. People certainly, God forbid, if they get any sort of sports injury, they cannot get back to where they were. You know, in fact, in the rest, part, in the rest of the world, we do see how people get better than where they were. You know, even if they've had a, you know, a tore ligament, you know, they, they were resting, they got it operated, they are doing better now for the football players, polo players, horseback riders. Now, what do we really need to do in between? You, we really need some time off from that pain. How to go about it is something that we will be talking about. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're very lucky that we've actually been joined by somebody who happens to be an interventional pain management specialist. He is Dr. Zahid Rustam Saab. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. How are you Wa feeling today? Wa alaikum assalam. Good morning. And, and I'm great. Because you. of the rain in the city. <laughs> thank, thank you so thank much. You I thought that you were going to say, because of our energy, you, you feel great. Of course. <laughs> sir. So I'm much. really surprised by your energy. <laughs> thank right, you so much. Right. And, and Dr. Saab, so now let's kick start our conversation and let's explore the definition of pain. So what is the intensity of the pain? What is the threshold of the pain? Right. If you want me to, you know, narrate the definition, it's going to be a scientific one and, you know, it's mm -hmm. most of the people might not understand mm -hmm. it. Yeah. But for practical purposes, True. pain is basically a protective mechanism. Okay. So whenever your body uh, is in a danger, mm -hmm. you'll feel pain and you'll get out of that situation. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can classify pain into two categories. Go ahead. One is like the acute pain and the other one is the chronic pain. Yep. So acute pain is basically the pain which we get after a fracture, after an injury and things like that. But chronic pain is some pain which will persist after the bone has healed or the muscle has healed. Ah, jai nahi rea. Jai nahi rea. Dr. Saab, my hand is not going to hurt me. Something like that. So, uh, when the pain becomes chronic, it is no longer a symptom. It becomes a disease. Okay, yes. So, it needs proper management. Like somebody has a heart attack, he goes to a specialist doctor for that management. So somebody with chronic pain, the pain which has been persisting for such a long time, you know, you need to see a, a doctor who has specialized in pain management. Yeah, and, right. and certainly, we would, uh, certainly we would like to kind of talk about that as well. But before we go there, I think what we really need to talk about is the dynamics of our community as well. Now imagine one way or the other, I think every third person is suffering from some sort of pain or illness over here in our country, unfortunately, may it be back issues. I think because of the fact that we live in a subcontinent and, and I don't know how healthy our forefathers were, but <laughs> I'm in doubt because imagine that the kind of conditions we go through. I mean, I've had myself two spine surgeries because of, yeah, because of the fact that, you know, that the canal was smaller genetically, right? Genetic. You know, so every time a disc would pop up, you know, it would actually create problem for me. So one, obviously, do you think that it's the genetics of the people over here that we are indulged? Is it the diet that we eat? Or is it the activities that we involve ourselves in? Actually, uh, the chronic pain is usually described by biopsychosocial, uh, you know, concept. Okay. Which means that you know you have some abnormality in your body, then it's the psychiatric elements that okay. provide a lot of, uh, you know, and then <laughs> the social uh, aspect, and finally the financial aspect. Yeah. So, uh, I think the psycho and the financial aspect are the most common aspects. Yeah, I mean, uh, in my practice, I usually see most, uh, more, uh, usually my, my clients are usually women okay. coming to me with a lot of aches and pains. And, when and why I is that, Dr. Saab? I mean, particular uh, demographic. Well, there is a condition which is called fibromyalgia. Okay. Uh, this is a condition in which uh, the patient would have exaggerated pain perception. Okay. So anything which should not give you pain, that is giving you pain. Yeah. Okay. And usually such patients, they have some sort of psychological issues going okay. on. Right. Uh, mostly depression or anxiety. Right. And the other thing is because of that depression, they're keeping their muscles all the tight without yeah. even knowing that. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, it's our heart is beating, we don't know that. So True. such patients, they're keeping their muscles all the ti right. uh, tight all the time. And as a result, uh, they develop knots. Mm. The most common areas are these the areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, eh? In the neck. If mm. they develop knots in the neck, it will yep. they will present to us with headaches, mm -hmm. which is not going, uh, falsely labeled as migraine and treated as migraine. And if the knots are here uh, around the neck, you know, the patient would come with a uh, lot of pain and stiffness around the neck. Yeah. And 
Yes, and that's a very interesting concept. And thank you so much, uh, Dr. Saab, for pointing out the multidisciplinary nature of the pain. And when we explain and explore through that, um, because of the fact, like Dr. Saab mentioned, that people suffer through anxiety and depression, and we're witnessing that there is a surge of the mental illnesses or mental conditions across the world. And they're unable to regulate that, and that reflects in their, I mean, nervous system or in this dysfunctional um, other systems, you know, which Dr. Saab will be better able to explain. But Dr. Saab, so now let's explore the lower back pains because we have seen that um, there's a surge of that. So are there any uh, environmental factors that are contributing, I mean, our lifestyles because we're sitting a lot, our office work or corporate sector, or generally professional life, we are on the desk. So what should we do to manage or, you know, uh, get relief from that pain? Uh, okay. Uh the local studies from Pakistan, hmm. they say that there is a prevalence of around 30 to 45.5 percent uh, of back pain in people around uh, more than 50 years of age. Talking about uh, back pain, you know, it could be, it could represent a serious condition, but in 90 percent of the cases, it is diagnosed as a non-specific back pain, hmm. right. which means that, you know, we are not able to find any reason. reason for that. Yep. So these cases, they would mostly go to the general practitioner, maybe internal medical specialist, and maybe sometimes to neurologist. Exactly. All we need in those cases would be, you know, a few days of pain medication, a lot of exercise, and if there are yellow flags, which means, you know, there are some psychiatric uh, Issues. pointers. Yep. So we have to refer these cases to the... And we will certainly come back to this as well, sir. We need to head out towards a short break. Where once you will come back, obviously, we need to ask for these solutions. So we're figuring out what are the other common issues as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have spoken about where people might be presenting to the doctors saying that they have not, you know, that they've got aches in their, in their neck as well. And they might not have any physical symptom, but it might be psychological as well, number one. Number two, obviously, we have spoken about the lower back pain as well, you know, how you, you present to the doctors. But in addition to this, I think uh, what I would want to is ask is or dwell on is that imagine that most of the time that we were at the gym, Haja, they would tell us that you're not drinking plenty of water. Okay. Then muscle spasms and you know, God forbid, if you do not treat muscle spasm, how badly can it affect your back as well if it's in the back as well. So let's talk about all of this. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We'll talk again about life without pain. Wow. It's a great start to this morning. Good but morning. But after a short break. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back and before going on to the break, Shazad sort of alluded to the sort of conversation we want to develop but I would like to further explore the lower back pains and Dr. Saab right. has some very insightful things to say about uh, specific pains and the non-specific pains. So, uh, sir, please, what is in your course? So as I was hmm. telling you, 90% of the patient would have no reason, hmm. you know. Five of the, five percent, six, five to eight percent would be, you know, somebody with uh, back pain going into the leg, which yeah. is commonly known as sciatica. Yeah. Yes. And a few people like yourself, you know, uh, somebody with a small canal, and then when there are degenerative changes, the canal gets further narrowed, and you know, this is something called spinal stenosis, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And uh, sometimes the patients can present with very s uh, serious symptoms, like, you know, they have lost control over their bladder and bowel. True. They have, you know, they have developed loss of sensations in their leg, they have developed a weakness. True. So the primary duty of uh, any pain specialist or anybody uh, seeing the patients with back pain is to recognize these red flags, True. right? right? right. So I can tell you a few red flags. So you Please go, go, ahead. go ahead. So the red flags is somebody who's presented with fever, weight loss, mm. uh, constitutional symptoms. They have weakness, extensive weakness in their lower limbs, you know, and uh, somebody having a back pain before 15 years of age and somebody having back pain after 55 years of age. Okay. So these are some of the uh, red flags which should be identified as early as possible and then they should be treated or the, uh, the physician looking after these, uh, these such patients, he should refer them to the right person. Okay. Right? So only one, p less than 1% uh, of the patient presenting with back pain will have serious uh, causes. Okay. That needs to be, you know, addressed as early as possible. Exactly. And yeah. sir, in addition to this, you know, because you, we have mm. spoken about neurological loss as well, you know, weakness of mm. the limbs, you know, when we talk about pain, in, uh, inter uh, interventional pain management, now do you think that with interventional pain management, they can actually help you get better or get rid of pain? 
or that your neurological loss will come back. Unfortunately, if you've lost the control of bowel or the bladder as well, you know, that, that can come back as well. Do we have examples of that or is it just to manage that, okay, you're not going to feel that bad as you were feeling before? Well, uh, let me explain uh, interventional pain sure. medicine first. You know, uh, you see, everybody is a pain specialist, starting from your mom, you know, if you have some ache, True. she's going to give you some brufen or True. something like that. Okay. If that doesn't help, you can go to the pharmacist in the yeah. street or the GP or sometimes you end up with an orthopedic surgeon or a neurologist. And I would even like to mention my wife as well. I think pain management starts from there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. of course, of course. Around the river. So uh, a pain management specialist, yeah, interventional pain management specialist, basically they are fully trained people. We receive extra education, extra training to manage uh, complex pains, right? So everybody can't be, uh, you know, but at the same time, if you keep on coming to the pain specialist, they would be saturated and you won't get the True. required help. So simple cases should be managed by, you know, the, the relevant physicians or yeah. neurology. But if the cases are complex, then they should be referred to us. Okay. And I think Sir mentioned a very important point and that just sprouted up in my mind and that is that, um, you know, nowadays not everyone is, the pain manage, uh, is in the pain management, right? And in our societies, particularly in the South Asian culture, so there is a, this particular norm that if you are going through the pain, the first thing that a mothers or, you know, the caregivers that uh, give us advice is that go for the massages, right? Or the oiling stuff. Uh, oiling below. Stuff. Yes. So, uh, so Prasab, how beneficial do you think are the massages That's in wrong. curing the pain? Or um, if it's a myth, myth, please bust it. Uh, well, uh, massages, you know, if done properly, they can help you, okay. yeah. right? Mm. But if done by somebody in the streets, you know, is putting a lot of pressure, you might break your rib or something else. True. Oh my God. Right. right? Exactly. So it is soothing. Right. It makes you addicted. Right. Right. Somebody giving me a massage, I would love him. Mm. But uh, scientifically say, saying uh, a rightly done uh, massage yes. is helpful. Thank you so much for right. saying that and you know for people who are out there, ladies and gentlemen, I have gone through it myself and once again I'm going to mention it over here. So imagine that our fall lies where unfortunately we are suffering from a pain, we think that it's going to get better. It's not getting better in a week's period. What we start to do is that we will actually resort to such masseuses where you know there are people who are going to massage mm -hmm. you and whatnot. Mm -hmm not knowing how worse the condition is within your own body. Mm -hmm. Now imagine I didn't knew before my surgery, I was getting, I was getting a physio uh, done every single day. I was doing stretching and I never knew that my L3-4 disc has actually slipped and it's out of my vertebra. Now imagine how much dangerous the kind of a situation was for, for me without knowing I was getting it all done. And when I got the MRI done, you know, when I was sitting in front of the doctor, I was like, I'm doing physio and all of this. He was like, stop everything now. Well, uh, let me give you, a, you know, a guideline how to manage sure. your back pain. So if the pain uh, is simple, there are no red flags, you know, you can manage it for four to six weeks with medication, with physical therapy and without any investigation. Okay. So if the pain is not getting better or there are some red flags, the patient needs an urgent uh, referral to the uh, specialist. And that specialist is going to, you know, decide whether the patient needs uh, further uh, yep. physical therapy, medication, or he needs surgery. And there is something in between which is called interventional pain management, yep. right? So this is something between medicine, when the medicines are not helping you and the f surgery can't be done yep. or it is not required. And that's where we need to come and see you as well. And in addition to this, I think yeah. we have got some x-rays as well. We would want to share them with our viewers. So, you know, I'm going to request my producer if we can have those x-rays. And then Doc Saab can tell us, you know, whether what's happening over here and what sort of, you know, interventional pain management is being done. Well, this is one of the procedures that Doc Saab is doing. But right. well, we have two more pictures of x-rays from for the back. I think what's happening over here, Doc Saab? Oh, well, this picture is showing that the cartilage between the knees is, you know, it's, it's gone. Something which is called osteoarthritis of the knee. Mm -hmm. If we can compare it with a normal x-ray, yep. you know, there is a line between two bones. And as we grow, as we age, that depletes. you know, that depletes and uh, a stage would come when the bone is touching the bone. This is called stage four osteoarthritis. Yep. Right. Right. And, right. And Dr. Saab, please explain arthritis because I do f find that there are a lot of people who are suffering from this particular, I don't know, condition or uh, I would yeah. say disease. Uh, you will, uh, you're a better yeah. place. Yeah. So arthritis basically means pain in the joints. Right. So it's like fever. Right. 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 Uh, a good doctor will always find a reason for fever. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes. Similarly, somebody presenting with arthritis, mm -hmm. a good doctor will try to find a reason for the arthritis or the pain in the joint. Right. So the most common uh, cause of arthritis or pain joint, joint, joint pain is, is aging. Yep. As we age, our right. joints degenerate and we get pain. True. Mm. The next category comes uh, is inflammatory arthritis, or you might have heard uh, about a condition called rheumatoid arthritis. Right. So this usually uh, involves the females in their 30s and 40s. Patients have pain in the joint, small joints of the hand, and they're very stiff in the morning. Okay. Right. And the third category is when there is, you know, I, I mean, there are so many things, but I'll try to make it simple. True. So the third category is when something increases in your body, like uric acid increases in your okay. body. You can get some, you know, uh, uh, pains in the toe and thing. And similarly, females, again, vulnerable to hypothyroidism, they mm -hmm. will get a lot of pain. So a good doctor will always try to find out what is the reason for arthritis. Exactly. So arthritis yeah. as such is a symptom, not a disease. Okay. Exactly. And it's because of age most of the time as well. All uh, your yeah, activities. I mean, I've, I've given you three categories. Yeah. Just oversimplified it. Right. But okay. uh, most of the patients coming to us, would have osteoarthritis. That's called osteoarthritis. Yes. All right. And they would come to us for this. And le let's move on towards solutions as well. Now, imagine that wh while we were talking about the knee joints as well, now we have certainly seen, you know, what the problem is, you know, how the, because of the degenerative changes, you know, you start to feel the pain. Now, imagine you cannot get a new uh, knee. Yeah, you know, you cannot get rid of the pain. And how do you think that you as a doctor in interventional pain management Will well, help. Uh, this is a very good question and I would like to, you know, uh, tell the people we have some solutions. Okay. Uh, right. We were doing in states and now, you know, we are doing here in Pakistan. Go also. ahead, sir. Uh, basically, the best management for uh, grade 4 uh, osteoarthritis knee, where we have bone on bone, is joint replacement. I, I, I'm really sorry I have to interject, but we are going on a short break and after we come back, we will con continue this conversation. Forward. Good morning. Beautiful people, thank you so much for staying to your repeat your world. You're still watching world this morning alongside Hajar Sati and Shahzad Khan. We're very lucky that today we've actually been joined by such a personality who's letting us know how to manage your pain. Unfortunately, if the doctor does not have any solution for you and you cannot go into surgery. Now, before heading out towards a short break, we were precisely talking about that, okay, I've got knee pain. I cannot go into surgery. I cannot manage my pain. How do you think that interventional pain management can help me? Dr. Shah, please go ahead. Yeah, we were talking about grade 4 or advanced osteoarthritis. Okay. Thing. I would still say that surgery is the best option. All right. But there would be a number of patients who would not be, you know, a okay. joint, you know, yeah. we will have to change it again. Okay. So we were talking about uh, the grade 4. So the best thing is joint replacement. But there would be a number of people like, you know, somebody who's elder, uh, who's very elderly, frail, you know, uh, doesn't his, he doesn't require going out for long Too distances much, yeah. uh, people who are medically not fit you know in this age group right. people will have some heart problems they have some lung problems you know and they are not fit to undergo anesthesia and you know uh, in our community many people would come and say asi loy de godianal kabar vich nahi jana so they don't want that so Okay, and the <laughs> final thing is, you know, it's it's a very expensive affair. Yes. Uh, a single joint replacement uh, in Islamabad can, you know, uh, can clear your pocket for like uh, seven to ten lakhs. Yep, that's it. At least so a million rupees. Uh, yeah. So the medicines are not working. You cannot get the surgery. So what is in between? Yep. So in between is interventional pain management. Okay. So we do a procedure which is called radio frequency nerve ablation. Okay. Right, it's it's a technical name, but basically what it is, it's like you know you have a tooth ache. You go to the dentist, they do a root canal. The tooth remains the same, but the pain is gone, yep. or it is removed because the pain goes because the nerve carrying the pain sensations to the brain, you know, it is disconnected or uh, disalarmed or things like that. Yep. Similarly. Uh, if you can pay the uh, show th us the pictures. Exactly. Please, can we show the pictures again as well where the, uh, you know, whatever treatment is going yeah. on? Yeah. So what we can do is uh, under x-ray guidance with the help of needles, yep. uh, we can pick up those nerves and with the help of a machine which is called a radio frequency generator, yep. uh, we can sort of ablate those nerves. All you right. see those needles? Yep, yes. yep, yep. So there are like three needles. So we are targeting three nerves in the knee. 
we sort of ablate them. Right. And this procedure is usually combined with two things. Mm -hmm. One is called PRP, uh, right. the females the and plasma. people with <laughs> you know less hair. They they know it very yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know it's 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 like a fertilizer, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Wherever you put it, it will help. Mm -hmm. So if we put PRP in the knees and combine it with radio frequency nerve ablation and rot of rehabilitation, 90% of the patient, their quality of life will be much improved. Exactly, but there are a couple a couple of questions as well. You know, imagine that if there was somebody you know sitting with knee pain right now, you know they might have to ask that okay. If you're going to disalarm, do you think that it will bring any disadvantages alongside it? Do you think that the patient who's actually suffering from the, the issue might not feel the pain? But what if they stretch it too far away? Yeah, so that's a very interesting question. Uh, most, uh, mostly asked. So by by to yeah. Yeah. Kar football Usually, leto. usually pain is, as we said, pain is, you know, something which uh, saves you from trouble. True. Right. And if you disconnect the, if you uh, disconnect the nerves. Which disalarm. Uh, disalarm, yeah. disconnect. Uh, disable, I would say. So uh, actually, we are not uh, disabling all the nerves. Okay. We are disabling around, you know, uh, but uh, uh, around 70 percent of the nerves, okay. right? You still have a lot of nerves. Right. Uh, we, when we are doing this procedure, we very precisely check uh, whether the nerves are sensory, which okay. means they are taking these sensations, or motor. Okay. Because if we ablate a motor nerve the muscles will be gone and you won't be able to. True. So this is a very nice procedure, you know, specially designed for patients uh, who, uh, who are not, uh, who are not willing to get a joint replacement or because of any reason, you know. Uh, I, I like it how the conversation is getting interesting now. Now, how would we differentiate with the help of a needle? I mean, obviously there will be technology, but I, you know, our viewers wa want to know about it, that whether the nerves Sensory or right. motory, yeah. right? Uh, this is a bit technical, <laughs> yeah. But uh, the radio frequency generator, they have an option. Okay. So what we do is, when we put in a needle, we sort of stimulate and yeah. see if the muscles are contracting. Right. This means we are uh, near to a motor nerve. Okay. And the patient is saying, if the patient is saying on sensory testing, this is the pain I usually have. Yeah. So we know we are close to the nerve, which wow. is carrying those pain sensations. So how much, uh, you know, l let me put it this way, you know, so how many times do you think that it's a bullseye, you know, out, out of 100%? Well, uh, we are very much trained in that. Alhamdulillah, we, obviously. Yeah, we, we use uh, uh, the guidance, x-ray guidance, we usually combine with ultrasound guidance. All right. So all these things, I think, uh, I, I said that 90% of our patients, they would be satisfied with their life. Alhamdulillah. You see, I have not used their pain will be finished for yeah. their patient. Their pain is usually lessened okay. so that they can sleep well at night. If they are taking like four or five medication, either they don't take any medication or they come, you know, they are settled with one medication. Yeah. Uh, and they can walk inside their house, you know, you, they can go to don't the toilet. Don't stretch it too far, yeah. You know, and they can, out, out, they can walk outside for few, uh, you know, uh, elderly going to the mosque. Yeah. But it is not possible that, you know, they are able to squat again, yeah. you know, pray uh, with a... Or vigorous uh, exercises yeah. that they are indulging in. But, but this should always be combined with a uh, lot of physical therapy. All right. Okay. Right? Okay. And, and uh, thank you so much, Dr. Saab, for highlighting that. And since we are talking and shedding light on the pain management and on the treatment options, and Dr. Saab has very uh, generously given us a non-expensive treatment option. So, sir, now when we're talking about the treatment options, now let's explore the non-opioid uh, treatment options. So, since you are expert in this field, please enlighten us. What is it about and how can we go through it? Well, uh if we look at uh, the pain management, there is something which is called WHO a ladder for pain management. Okay. So we usually start with uh, the simple analgesics mm -hmm. like Panadol. Mm -hmm. yep. But the, uh, the caveat here is, you know, uh, s occasionally taken pan Panadol doesn't help. Okay. Okay. The recommendation is three to four grams of Panadol taken three to four times a day. Yep. So one tablet is like 500 milligram. So um, the minimum you have to take is like six, six tablets a day. Yep. Right? right. So sometime when we tell our patients that you have to take six medicine, they usually, they usually get confused. But I have a book in my office. I show them this is not from my side. This, this is, is from, from the document. Mm -hmm. So uh, if the pain doesn't improve with that, then we go to the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication. Okay, okay. So 
these are the commonly used sin flags and brufen yep. and you know rt fin and things like that and, and dr sir we do have this tendency particularly in our region um, of self medication yeah. so if we are having pain i mean the first thing that i would do is i have a panadol without any doctor's recommendation how harmful or beneficial is that practice well occasionally taken medications are okay okay, okay. so if you are going to doctor for every pain they will be flooded the patient requiring our expertise will not be, you know, uh, we won't be able to see them. Yep. So occasionally taken medicine is okay. okay. But if you have become habitual, you mm -hmm. know, and your pain is chronic, uh, the best thing is to see a, pa uh, a pain specialist. Yeah, and thank you so much, sir, for saying that as well, because I think with uh, Panadol and Brufer, it, it might be all right, you know, if occasionally you're doing so. Mm -hmm. But imagine that people do not stay in their limits. You know, they move on to morphine and codeine and such elements as well, where they're highly mm -hmm. addictive. And you cannot get it with either without a prescription of a doctor. Sure. But sir, this is one uh, way of looking at it where, you know, we are used to self-medication. There's another way of looking at it. And that is that, I'm sorry, but I have to use this Punjabi word. We have a lot of shock, you know. So we will be in pain. You know, there are painkillers for a reason. There, there's intervention pain management. But we would want to suffer ourselves because of the fact that we are brave people. Putar tenu ki hai. Aur dar nahi hunda. Koi masla nahi hai. So imagine I've seen a lot of people in pain because of the fact that they are very big and dead. Yeah, please go ahead, address that now. <laughs> well, this is an uh, interesting situation. <laughs> or it's linked with the religious concept of sabar, you know, you need to do sabar and have yeah. that pain. Yeah, I mean, uh, you see, uh, people uh, going to quacks and all sort of things, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. If they are so good, they should be sitting in our place, you know, True. in a in an air conditioned mm -hmm. office and, you know, uh, <laughs> going to America, publishing paper and all sort of things. Yeah. I don't know how can people trust them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, well, suffering from pain, they say that uh, uh, suffering pain is, uh, uh, no, having pain is compulsory, but suffering is uh, optional. Choice, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So everybody will suffer from pain. True. How much you suffer, that's your option. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So if it is a simple pain, you know, like a headache or, uh, you know, acute strain in the back, you can take those medication, get some rest, do some exercises, apply heat at, our, at your own home. And, and sir, people know it in the West as well. So imagine when I got operated, this nurse came in and she was like, you know, Mr. Khan, whenever you feel pain, you have to let me know. I will give you some medication because it's built for that purpose. Okay. I was like, why are you saying that? Obviously, I will do that. She was like, you know, people, when they come from your country, they do not take painkillers. And yeah. it's quite a mess then. Yes, you, you're right, you know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. People think that, you know, they can get over all sort of pains. True. Right? Why, why do you want to suffer? Why, I don't get that. I don't get that. I anyway. mean, there are so many companies in the world making all these pain medication. Right. But sir, very quickly, you know, we obviously, you know, segued a little bit from our conversation, but it was for the education of the people. You know, if you are in the doctor's hand, please make sure that you listen to his advice because it will help you recover well as well. Now, sir, you know, we've spoken about osteoporosis a little bit as well. You know, what sort of pain management are we talking about only orthopedic pain management? Are we talking about organ organs as well? Are we talking about headaches, all sorts of pains, whatever it may be, heart heartbreaks? <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about the heartbreaks, but uh, you know, pain arising from any structure should be looked after by a pain specialist. True. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. yep. They are specifically trained for that. Mm -hmm. uh, let me share about one condition. Sure. It is called trigeminal neuralgia. Sure. Okay. So it is one of the most painful conditions okay. right, a human being can have. Sir, can, can you please uh, kind of say it in a jargon where ja our audiences can understand well, it? Well, uh, in our uh, head and neck, we have like 12 nerves. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever there is a problem with the fifth nerve, which is called trigeminal nerve, the patient will have sharp shooting pain. Okay. okay. Right? And in, 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 in the face? On one side of the uh, okay. face. So there are three, three branches, mm -hmm. uh, depending upon which branch is affected. Mm -hmm. They will have very sharp shooting pains. Okay. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't allow you to take any food. Even, you know, you can't take any fluids. You know, okay. your nutrition is... Uh, compromised and the pain is so severe that it is called disease of suicide okay. okay because the pain is so severe people would like to you know they would like to commit suicide 
rather than having this thing. And, right. and what is the treatment for that? Treatment, well, there are uh, certain treatments which can help. Mm -hmm. uh, few are surgical treatment mm -hmm. and few are conservative treatment, right. Right? right? And uh, few are interventional pain All right. right. So if an old patient come to us and there is an abnormality found on the uh, MRI of the brain, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, we would s usually start with medication. Mm -hmm. There are certain medications mm -hmm. which can help. Sometimes the medications don't help or their side effects are too much. Right. Then they are usually referred to us and we do another procedure which is called radio frequency of the uh, trigeminal nerve. The same one we use uh, for yeah, it's, it's yeah. yeah, it's, 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 we are go ins inside that nerve. It's, a, it's technically a very difficult procedure. It mm. is to be done under uh, X-A guidance again and you have to be very, very specific because uh, if you advance your natal by two to three millimeter, you might puncture the brain. Mm -hmm. So uh, really an expert person has to do all this. All right. And Dr. Saab, very quickly because of the shortage of the time, so when uh, someone is going through a migraine pain, right, as a lay person, what should that person do immediately or his helper or the people mm -hmm. surrounding that? to release that pain because that is also very chronic. Take, take the medication. <laughs> yeah, what? Take, take the medication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. M migraines or uh, headaches are usually helped when the medication is taken as early as possible in the, okay? okay? okay. okay. Exactly. Don't wait for pain to come, you know, you, you know your pain is coming. Mm. Yeah. Most of the migraineers would know. And uh, for long term, you know, for prevention, there are usually medication. Okay. So uh, any headache that persists more than 15 days a week is called chronic daily headache. All right. Okay. So this is something which should be seen by a pain specialist. Right? And, and that can be helped with the interventional pain management practice well, as well? Well, uh, in my practice, I see most, uh, I see many females coming with fibromyalgia. They have a lot of trigger points here, yep. yes. right? Yes. So if we inject those trigger points, release those trigger points, most of patients will get better. Yeah. While there are some other, sometimes trigeminal, uh, the uh, treatment I told for trigeminal neuralgia, the RF of the Gazarian ganglion, that can also help, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. So uh, overall, you know, the management should be multidisciplinary, you know, and one thing more about migraine, you might be suffering from that. Uh, migraineers are like kings, right? Mm -hmm. They need a very tight schedule, right? If they sleep more, they'll get a migraine. Okay. If they sleep less, they'll get a migraine. If they eat less, they'll get a migraine. If they eat more, they'll get a So they need to have a very disciplined Better. life. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Saab, for Thank being with so us. Much. Lovely to be in conversation Thank with you. So you. Thank you so much for being so sweet as well. <laughs> I think we've asked you so many questions, which Dr. Saab might not even answer while he's in clinic as well. But for everybody who's out there, ladies and gentlemen, please no, make sure. Let me, let me tell you, you can check my profile. I usually give like uh, 30 to 35 minutes to all my patients. Mashallah. That's because wonderful. pain is bio psycho socio economical exactly and, yeah. and sir you That's know for everybody who's listening to us today how can they get in touch with you you know is well, there a uh, clinic address number yeah i'm 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 working at uh, my I, i'm heading my own practice by the name of islamabad pain spine and stroke center it is in g8 marcus just a, uh, a floor above I islamabad diagnostic center wonderful right. sir so for everybody who's out there ladies and gentlemen we've given away the information until next time look after yourselves we just want everybody to live a life which is pain-free. Amin Samamin. Good morning. Good morning.